Okay, so welcome to this video on the NVIDIA licensing service. What I'm going to be doing today is showing you a full show and tell on both the CLS, the cloud-based license server, and the DLS, the delegated license server, or on-prem licensing service. So this video is designed to be used by newcomers to the NVIDIA licensing service. If you already have a licensing service, the old legacy or Flexera license service, there's another video on this playlist, which I'll put a link to in the corner now, just so that you can follow that for your migration up to the NVIDIA licensing service. Okay, so let's take a look at the architecture of both the CLS and the DLS and see how they differ. So irrespective of whether you choose the CLS or DLS deployment method, you're going to be configuring your licensing services within the licensing portal online. The DLS or delegated licensing service is the nearest analogy to the previous licensing service that we used to have. It's on-prem and it's managed by you, the customer. It's virtual appliance based. You can download and install it very, very simply as I'll show you in a minute. And we support it with all the various hypervisors that we have. So VMware, Citrix, Hyper-V and KVM support. There's even a container version that you can deploy with Docker. Uh, we can also allow you to deploy that via Kubernetes, OpenShift or Tanzu as well. The DLS can be configured as an HA pair as you'll see in the demo as we go through it. It also has in-place upgrade capability. So as we're bringing out new versions of the DLS, you can upgrade to the latest version very quickly. The DLS talks to our NVIDIA licensing portal via manual file copy. So there isn't any synchronization done automatically between the NVIDIA licensing service and the NVIDIA licensing portal. When you create a DLS, you register it on the NVIDIA licensing portal and then the licensing portal will then copy a license down to it later, as you'll see as we go through this demonstration. The other component we have is the license client itself, typically a virtual machine running Windows or Linux. This model differs slightly from our previous version in that we have something called a client configuration token that sits on this license client. And by talking to our delegated license server, we'll either lease or return a license based on its requirements. Now the CLS is very, very similar to the DLS, except for it's hosted by us in the cloud. It's a free of charge service, and in the same way as we have with the DLS, the CLS will lease and return licensing across the cloud. There are some considerations around ports that may need to be opened across your firewall, but we also support proxies as well, if you don't allow access on ports 80 or 443 directly from clients. So what version of software do you need to be on in order to take advantage of the NVIDIA licensing service? Well, basically, if you're using NVIDIA AI Enterprise, it uses the licensing service by default. However, some of the older versions of virtual GPU, version 12 and below, don't actually use and cannot be configured with the NVIDIA licensing service. So you need to be on version 13 of vGPU. Now, if you're using the current latest version of vGPU, which is version 15, you'll also find that it no longer supports the legacy license server anymore. So you'll be obliged to actually upgrade to NLS if you do move to vGPU version 15 or above. Okay, so let's start on configuration. So whether you've got an evaluation or you've paid for licenses, this process is going to be exactly the same. As you can see, I've got some evaluations here that are going to expire soon, but they're still good to go right now. So the first thing I want to do is create a new licensing server. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to create a CLS or cloud-based licensing server. So let's go in here and give it a name and a description. You'll see we also have an option down the bottom here to configure an express CLS installation. And you'll see that really within under a minute, you'll be able to get a CLS up and running. Just come in here, choose our entitlements. Maybe we want to choose all of them by default, or in this case, because we're configuring other license servers after, I'm just going to add 50 of each. That's 50 clients that can manage. Create the server, and within a few seconds, we'll have deployed a CLS on our own infrastructure in AWS, and this license server will be ready for action. All we need to do now is generate our client configuration token, which we will copy down onto our clients. We can also put this in a file share, by the way, and actually allow access to it from a central location. This is highlighted in the documentation.
Okay, so if you've chosen to use the CLS licensing model, then you can now skip forward to the chapter in this video that concerns itself with configuration of the client VMs. If you're interested to see how easy it is to install the DLS, stay tuned. Okay, so let's go ahead and deploy our delegated licensing service. The first thing we need to do is download the software for that in virtual appliance format. Now, you might need to upgrade your virtual GPU, so just, here's a quick tip on how to find the right version of vGPU that you're after. Go here, choose your hypervisor version, and then just drill down to what your actual hypervisor version is and what the product version is of virtual GPU or NVIDIA AI Enterprise that you want to download. As you can see, I'm going with the latest 15.1. And very quickly, from a very long list, you'll be able to see exactly the files that you need to download. Now, to download the DLS, what we need to do is go to the section on non-driver downloads, and once again, select our deployment method, in this case, vSphere. We're going to go with the latest version, and we're going to download the license server. Now, once we've downloaded it and unzipped it, we just need to go into vCenter. As you can see, we've got a few virtual machines running here already. I'm going to be showing you how to configure Ubuntu and Windows 10 with the licensing service. We've also got a legacy license server here. So if you're wondering whether you're using the legacy license server and need to upgrade, this is exactly what it looks like. This is the admin UI. So let's go ahead and install our OVF package that we just downloaded from the NVIDIA portal. Select the file itself and go through a few configuration screens for this. Give it a name and then it's just going to go through now and allow us to define where we're going to put this virtual machine. Come in here, select the storage we're going to download it on. We can do fine with thin provisioning, that's no problem at all. Choose which network we want the DLS to land on, and then install the IP address details. Now you'll notice that depending on what version of the appliance that you have, the ordering of this particular screen might be slightly different. As you can see on this one, the IP address is actually down the bottom. So just make sure you don't get caught out by that. As you can see, we're entering also the DNS name, Netmask in CIDR format. In my case, it's 255.255.255.0, so that's 24 and then the gateway address. Hit finish, and within a couple of minutes, we're going to have our DLS imported and ready for initial configuration. I'll, I'll save you the few minutes here and I'll just fast forward the video. So what I've done is I've now installed two DLSs, okay? DLS1 and DLS2, and as you can see, they've booted. Now, when they first boot, you might notice a strange IP address come up, like a DHCP address which is dissimilar to the one that you actually gave it during the configuration. Don't worry about that, just give it a few minutes and it'll land on the correct address that you gave it. You'll also notice there's a 172 address. Don't worry about that 172 address, that's just an internal network that the DLS uses for communication between its database and the DLS container that's running in there. So the first thing we do is go to the IP address of our first DLS and go for a new installation. Obviously, for administration purposes, we have an admin user called DLS admin. We're going to allocate that a password and we're going to continue to log in after saving our secret. Log in with DLS admin and our new password and we'll be ready to do some token exchange. Now, before we do that token exchange and uh, download our DLS token to register this with our online portal, what I'm just going to do is change the name of this DLS server. Because it is a default download, it doesn't have a specific name, just the date associated with it. So in my case, I'm just gonna call it DLS London. Okay, so now we're ready to register this DLS appliance with the NVIDIA portal. And we've got a DLS instance token, which you just need to download to a file share somewhere. Next thing we need to do is go back into the NVIDIA licensing portal and go to service instances. As you can see, here's the service instance that was there before from the CLS installation we did. We're going to download a DLS token into here, choose the token that we just created from our DLS and select upload. Now, just to register it, we just need to hit the register button. You can do an offline registration if you're in a secure environment as well, and that is documented in the documentation. 
Okay, so now let's create a new license server and take some of those entitlements. In this case, we're gonna have DLS London and our description is going to remain the same. Now, notice here we have something called disconnected leasing mode. We'll be going back to that later on. That's a new feature we just have. Again, in the same way as we did with CLS, we're going to go in here and allocate some of our evaluation licenses to this DLS server and we're going to create it. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is just bind that license server and the entitlements we've just created with that service instance that we registered with the system. So come in here, find that DLS London that we just registered and hit the bind button. Okay. So now all we need to do is we need to take that licensing information, that licensing configuration, and download the file onto our new DLS. Hit the download button. We've now got a fully configured package that we can use offline on our DLS. Pop back into our online DLS and just select the license server file that we created from the portal just now. Hit install server and we should be good to go very, very soon. And there you have it, very easy configuration for DLS. Now, because we have two DLSs, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna set up an HA pair. As you can see, it's uh, taken the IP address of the initial one. We've got dls1.nvtest.local. It does a reverse DNS lookup um, to get that address. We've also got DLS2, which is .22. So let's just go ahead and configure an HA pair between these two. Just do a quick ping of the IP address of the secondary server and hit the create cluster button. Now this takes a couple of minutes, but effectively what this is going to do is it's gonna copy the configuration down to that brand new DLS2. So if it needs to become the primary server, it can promote itself. Also there's a, an online synchronization between the two all the time so that they can keep track of leases, that kind of thing. So now that we have an HA pair configured, what we can now do is we can now create our client configuration token, which is going to allow us to license our virtual machines. Now we can choose IP for this or we can use FQDN. FQDN gives you a bit of extra flexibility because it means you can change the IP address of the server underneath and it's not gonna affect your tokens. You're not gonna to need to download them. So there we go. We just download the client configuration token and we're now ready to license some clients. We're just gonna rename it CCT for DLS, just so that we can differentiate it when we're copying it down to our clients. Okay, so that's the back end configured. Now what do we need to do on our client VMs to get them up and running with the NVIDIA licensing service? Let me show you how to configure a Windows machine with this new client configuration token. As you can see here, we've got a few boxes open. We've got the NVIDIA control panel. Now, if you see this manage license option here, this is an option that you don't use with the new NVIDIA licensing service. This is just from the legacy license server, okay? So that license option will disappear when you do this. We've also just going to set the tail of the log file so that we can see things happening in the licensing log file as it happens. We've got a display container here, the NVIDIA display container service. And if we close that, you can see it's now closed down the licensing configuration as well. Now, if you're doing an upgrade, you might need to look in the registry and just make sure you've got a few settings set. Uh, if you're using vGPU 14 or 13, then here is the place where you have the registry settings. At the moment, because this is an upgrade, I've actually got some information that relates to my previous license server. I'm gonna just delete all of those in there just to make sure I've got a nice clean install. I'm just gonna create something called feature type and leave the value at nothing. This will be automatically populated. There's also another place here, grid software. There's a couple of entries in here on an upgrade and I'm just gonna take them out. Now, bear in mind, that the feature type is pretty much the only thing you need in here. If you're using vGPU version 15, just to be really clear, you don't need to do any of this registry editing stuff. We actually moved to um, a new type of driver with vGPU 15 called DCH, and the registry settings aren't even here under local machine software NVIDIA um, anymore. So don't worry about that. Okay, 
So we're nearly ready to copy our configuration token across now. So let's just go ahead and do that. The client configuration token needs to sit in a specific directory on our machine. You can actually modify this and put it on a file share, as you can see from the documentation. But it's under this directory here, client configuration token. Let's take that client configuration token that we created earlier and just cut and paste it down into my virtual desktop. Relocate it into that directory and we'll be good to go for licensing. Now in order to trigger off an activity here so that we start the licensing service, obviously this is done at reboot, uh, we just need to restart the service. If you want to check just to see what licensing is at at the moment, run the NVIDIA SMI command, and as you can see there, it's unlicensed currently. So let's go ahead and show you how that changes once we now start the NVIDIA container service. First thing you'll notice is that some logging entries, NLS started. There's going to be a few messages around the license not being found to start off with. But after a few seconds, you'll see license successfully acquired or acquired successfully. And if, now if we go into the command prompt and type the same NVIDIA SMI command again, you'll see that it's licensed within here. What you'll also notice is if we go back to our DLS server and go into the leasing section, you'll see a new lease is now allocated to that virtual machine. And you'll see all your leases in here, be able to release them if you need to as well. Just to point out, let's go into the log file and just show you where to go if you're having problems and you're not quite sure. Here's the directory it's in. And as you can see, this is the log file history from this virtual machine that we can use for troubleshooting purposes. Okay, so let's show you how to configure a Ubuntu VM with NVIDIA licensing. Let's copy our client configuration token down to my home directory on that VM and give myself some extra rights in here, some extra admin rights to do some admin. Obviously, this virtual machine already has the NVIDIA driver installed in it. We just need to configure the licensing now. As you can see, the CCT for DLS token is there in the file system. Now, the first thing we need to do is just check the configuration file for this, which is under ETC NVIDIA. The file's called griddd.conf. In here, you've got some legacy license server settings such as server address. We don't need that. That won't be in there if this is a brand new install, of course. Same with port number. We want to remove that. Pretty much the only thing we need to make sure we've got in here is the feature type set. As my profile I'm using at the moment is an RTX virtual workstation one, I'm going to use version um, feature type 2. If it was Virtual Compute Server or NVIDIA AI Enterprise, it would be version 4. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is just copy that from my home directory into the correct directory for the licensing token, which is NVIDIA slash client config token. After we've done that, let's just do a quick LS just to make sure that that client configuration token is in the right place. And it is. So now what we need to do is we need to restart the grid D service to pick up that token. If we run NVIDIA SMI minus Q, the same way as we did on our Windows workstation, we can actually come in and see that that license is now valid and the client is licensed. We can also go through to the option within the licensing portal or the DLS, should I say, and you'll see that Ubuntu One is now licensed. In the same way with Windows, there's also a log file on Linux as well. In Ubuntu, it's actually in var log syslog. So if you just have to take a quick look in our syslog file in that Ubuntu VM, you'll be able to look and search out for any error messages that you're receiving. As you can see there, license acquired successfully right down the bottom. So we're all good to go. OK, so one of the features we've brought out recently is something we call disconnected leasing or node lock licensing, as it's sometimes known. This means your clients don't need a connection to the license server in order to function correctly. This is a little harder to manage, though, because each client now needs a dedicated license file that's tailor made to the MAC address of their NIC. 
So what I'm going to do now is configure a node lock license server. What we can do is actually convert an existing license server to node lock licensing if we want to. I'm not going to do that. We've got a few licenses left over. Let's just create a new license server and make it disconnected. NLL demo, the same description. We're going to choose disconnected leasing mode so the license won't need to be a license server won't need to be on in order for this to work with clients. We're going to go ahead and say, well, you know, we've got 28 licenses left in here. So let's just create all 28 into this node lock license. Hit create server, and this will create a disconnected mode license server and a CLS to host it. Just going to disable this server just for now because we need to change a single setting. This is something you won't need to do in the future, but we just need to make sure that our max lease duration time is its maximum, which is 365 days. This will allow us to use this disconnected license for 365 days. As I say, in a few months time, we're going to be removing this restriction. So the license that you create now won't actually expire until the actual entitlement expires. Now, as I mentioned, we need MAC addresses in order to make this disconnected license server work. So I'm just going to take the MAC address of my virtual machine here. And when I generate my disconnected leases, I'm going to put it into here. Let's just give this disconnected lease a year and go in and put that MAC address. Now, the MAC addresses of the VMs need to be in a specific format, and this isn't quite right. So what we're just going to do is go ahead and put colons in between these numbers here to make it the correct the correct format. What we can also do is collect all the MAC addresses that we want to do, put them in a comma delimited file and actually select that file. So if I go and say select file, for instance, I can go into one I created earlier and it'll actually pre-populate that for us. We then just have to say what feature we want to use offline and hit generate. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to create a node lock license file, zip file, and in there, it's going to be a license file for each of my virtual machines based on MAC address and an index file, which gives us an information on which license is relevant to which MAC address. We can go into leases here and the information is also available in here. So we know which license needs to sit on which virtual machine. As we can see, our first one here is the license that we're going to need to use for our virtual machine. So let's just go ahead and take that license and move it into our VM. From the moment we put this license in there, we will no longer need a connection to the license server for this virtual machine to function correctly. Now, because this was already set up with NVIDIA online licensing, we're just gonna go ahead and delete that client configuration token from within there. The node lock license goes in a slightly different directory, the license directory. And once that's done, we'll be able to re-license that VM using that node lock license. Bear in mind that this feature is only available in version 15 of virtual GPU and above, okay? So you'll need to be on vGPU 15 to use node lock licensing. As you can see, we have a successfully acquired a license and we're now good to go. And if we go into NVIDIA SMI slash Q, you'll see it's also licensed within there as well. Okay, so before I leave you, I just wanna share with you a few of the frequently asked questions that we get regarding the NVIDIA licensing service. So the first question is, what version of the virtualization software do I need in order to use NLS? And the answer to this is that I need to use the GPU manager on the server version 13 or above, the client drivers version 13 or above as well. And also bear in mind that vGPU 15 and NVIDIA AI Enterprise products actually require the use of NLS. They're not compatible with a legacy license server. Okay, so the next question is, what virtual hardware should I use on my DLS appliances when I'm configuring and creating my virtual appliances on my hypervisor? So we've done a bit of testing and the default configuration that we offer should provide the following functionality. So four virtual CPUs, eight gig of RAM, and the default 10 gig hard disk will have the ability to service 38,000 clients 
given that you use the default lease period of 24 hours. Each virtual client contacts the license server about five times every 24 hour period. Now, if you move your lease period down to say an hour, for instance, that's five times an hour instead of five times every 24 hours. So the load on the license server gets a little bit more. But if you leave the default lease period at 24 hours, then 38,000 clients can be managed via this configuration. Okay, so the next question is, are there any firewall considerations for DLS or CLS? Well, for DLS, it's not normally a big problem because of course, your DLS is on the same internal network as your clients are. There are some requirements for DLS to DLS communication if you have an HA pair, especially if you're doing this cross site between two internal sites. All of the information is either in the main documentation or the frequently asked questions. For CLS, as I mentioned earlier on, you do need to have ports 80 and 443 open across your firewall to have direct communication with the CLS services within NVIDIA's cloud. We do support proxies though, so just check out the documentation for how to configure proxy support. That will be the documentation for vGPU and NVAIE as opposed to the documentation for DLS and CLS. So the next question that I get asked quite often is the cloud-based licensing server free and does it have a service level agreement? Well, yes to the first one, absolutely it's free. This is hosted by Nvidia and there's no additional charge for this service. Do we have a service level agreement? Well, the service level agreement that we typically talk about is the SLA that AWS has with us. So there are a number of different services that are being used within AWS ranging between 99.95% dedicated availability to 99.99% service availability. We also have regional failover that we commit to being up and running within a 10 minute period. And don't forget though, if you do have an outage of the CLS or even the DLS service, the running clients aren't gonna notice that service is gone for at least 24 hours after it's gone. Check out the documentation, it goes through all of that in some detail. Really an outage of the CLS or the DLS is only really relevant to clients that are booting up at the time and don't find a license server there when they boot up. And the last question that I get asked on a regular basis, does my DLS need to be time synced with my guest VMs? And the answer to that is yes. Let me show you. So as you can see, this virtual machine is nearly at one o'clock and you can see from the license log up the top there, that there's some issues. Uh, the allowed time to process response has expired. So there's a problem probably between time sync on this VM and the DLS. Now a quick tip we can do is go into events and actually go and refresh that button there. As you can see, both under events and under leases, we're actually sitting at 11.57, which is an hour earlier than our client. So let's just go ahead and just move our client back an hour so that you can see what happens. So let's stop and start our NVIDIA licensing service now that time sync has been reached. And you'll notice there that the DLS and the license server works correctly and the license is acquired. There's kind of a variance of about five to 10 minutes either way of time sync that you need to have, but typically keeping the VMs in sync with each other is the best thing to do. Okay, well, thanks for listening. And don't forget, if you're migrating from our legacy license server, there's another video on this playlist which will guide you through the whole process. Thank you.